a whole different spirit in the house today. My God, my God. Mm. You can just feel it. God is doing something here. My topic this morning from Exodus chapter 33, verses 17 through 23, and I'm going to read it from the New International Version just so that we can have some clarity on it. Now the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you ask because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you and will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy, will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back. But my face must not be seen. I would like to use as a topic this morning, standing on the rock. Now, this is a beautiful passage of interaction with God. It is one of my favorites. And I know I've preached from it before. But I'm in my first grade mode. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Simply because I never tire of reading this passage. Because I never tire of seeing the interaction between God and Moses. And every time I read it, I project myself into that situation. What if I were in Moses' place, up on that mountain, just me and God having a conversation and knowing how I feel about the Lord and would want the same thing Moses wanted. To be able to see God like that. And knowing how I would feel when the Lord placed his hand upon my face. Can you just imagine to literally Feel the hand of God upon your face. Now, I know how I feel when the spirit hits me. And y'all have seen some evidence when the spirit hits me. I go into serious can't help it mode. The bigger the touch, the more in the run forest run mode I go. Y'all have seen my sanctified fits. They go from tears I can't control to just getting loose and having that Shabbat kind of praise where you just go out of your mind. I can just imagine how he would have felt. This is also a picture of how close 
we can get to God. It's a beautiful passage. If we just want to seek God like that, we can all have that kind of experience. Now, th let me just fast forward a little bit. Now, I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but the outcome was when Moses came down from the mountain after having this experience, just seeing the back of God, just seeing his back. As he walked by and took his hand down and walked by, the Shekinah glory was so great on Moses' face that the people couldn't stand to look at Moses because his face was so bright with the glory of God, they begged him to wear a veil until the essence of what he had experienced wore off. Can you imagine what it would be like on Monday morning when you went to your good job after being in the Holy of Holies with God? Or after slipping away on your job to pray about some situation and you slipped into the zone when you went to the ladies room or the men's room to have a little quiet prayer time and God met you there and you came out and the glory of God was so bright on your face that your co-workers couldn't stand to look at you and they sent you home because you were blind in the whole office. What a testimony that would be. Mm, somebody, somebody gonna go pray tomorrow. <laughs> Believe me, I'd be in send me home mode. But even if they didn't send you home and told you to put on some sunglasses or something, but that would still be a testimony. Somebody would come in, why are they wearing sunglasses? Well, we can't stand to look at them because something happened and they're so bright and so glowing, we can't stand to look at them. Can you imagine all the devils would run from you? I want to look at what, this, what the significance is of the place by God and the rock where Moses stood. And as I mentioned, this is one of my favorite passages. Moses had a desire to get real close to God. And he wanted to look upon the face of God. And I often ask myself, why couldn't he see God's face? Why could no man see God's face and live? And as I thought about it, I got a couple of answers for you. First of all, Moses was still in a carnal body, a carnal body that had been in sinful places. Now, God can't deal with sin. Even though his heart had changed, he was still carrying a dead carcass. So in order for God to do that, he would have had to kill the carcass to interact with his spirit. So he says, now, I won't let you see my face because if you look at my face, then I got to kill you because you, your body represents the, 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 the sin nature. I can deal with your spirit because I've washed your spirit clean. But I got to kill your body, but I'll let you see my back. The other thing is, the only physical image that God has, I got to go back to Genesis at the creation and hear what God says when he created man. And a lot of people breeze right over when they read it. God said, let us. Didn't say let me. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Scratching his head. 
Uh, God, if I'm talking to you, who are you talking to? Well, if we understand who God is, the triune God as we talk about in, in our belief, and we're not worshiping three gods as certain people say we are, it's one true God. One, one true God with several ways he operates in our lives. He operated as creator. He's operated as mediator. Now he's operating as comforter. But it's the same God. Just like those of us that have children, we are somebody's child. And we are also somebody's parent. And we are also, if you've got a husband or a wife, you are somebody's spouse. Or you are somebody's brother or sister. There are several offices that you operate in. But you are one person. And you don't interact with mama and daddy the same way you interact with children or spouse or sister or brother. Am I right about it? Yes. But are you not the same person? And you're not no schizo personality. You are the same person, but there are several different offices that you operate in. So that knocks that foolishness mess out of the window about separate gods. Yeah, I said it. And I ain't taking it back. Because it's truth. So, why couldn't Moses... Look at God's face, the second reason. First of all, the first reason was his body represented a sinful nature. But also, the time wasn't right because there's only one body that God has. And that's the body of him who went to Calvary's cross in our behalf. And it wasn't time for the face of our redemption to be seen. It wasn't time for the face of Christ to be seen. The time wasn't right yet. Things were not all the way in place yet. He was still raising up the nation for whom he was going to use to bring the Savior. The time wasn't right. But God was already working out the plan. But he told Moses, he says, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'll give you a sneak preview. I will put you in the place by me. I, there's a rock on which you can stand. Oh, wait a minute. Let me fast forward a little bit to a conversation Jesus had with Peter. Peter, who do people say that I am? Well, Peter talking now. Well, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're this prophet or that prophet. Peter, who do you say I am? You're the Messiah. Peter. Uh, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. The spirit revealed that to you. Your name Peter means little pebble. But upon this rock, this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I'm going to give you the key to the kingdom. Now the key wasn't he was going everything Peter unlocked. He was going to give Peter the, the, the key meaning he was going to give him the answer of how to get in. It wasn't he was going to make him the one in control of it. He was going to give him the answer. And the answer was Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. That's the key. So if we go back, he says upon this rock, meaning himself. Now let's go back several generations. And God tells Moses, I want to stand you on the rock. So even before the time of Christ, 
He allows him to stand on the foundation of Christ. To see his glory pass by. Moses, I'm going to allow you to stand on the source of salvation. I've got this thing I'm working out that, that's going to be complete when I finish it, where you won't have to offer sacrifices anymore. Moses, I'm going to let you stand on the foundation. You know, when you're building a house, the first thing you got to do is lay a foundation. And you know, when somebody's building a house, they go by and check it out even before it's built. When they get the foundation go, they drive by. Oh, that's going to be my house right there. And sometimes people walk, walk around and look at it and they walk down in the dirt and around in the middle of where they're pouring the concrete. Oh, yeah, this is going to be the basement. Oh, and this is where the walls are going to be up right here. Moses, stand on this rock right here. Moses, this is going to be the foundation of salvation. So you're going to stand on this rock, Moses, and then I'm going to pass by you. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to put my hand over your face because it's not time for you to see the face of it. It's not finished yet. We got some, some generations to go through. Some folks got to go through something first. I've, I've got to get some folks in place. I've got to get some, some Rahabs in place. I've got to get some, some Rachels in place. I've got to get some Jesses in place. I've got to get some Davids in place. I've got to get somebody named Mary and Joseph in place. I've got to get some folks in place first. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on the foundation. I'm going to let you see what I got in mind and I'm going to put my hand over your face. I'm going to walk by and I'm going to tell you my name. So he put his hand over Moses' face. And when he walked by, I think the first thing Moses saw was a nail print in the wrist of the hand of God. And I bet he probably wondered, God, why you got a nail print in your hand? Not time for me to tell you, Moses. And when he walked by, can you see him now looking at nail prints in both hands and thorn prints in the crown brow? Probably asking, why, why you got them scars where your crown is? Can't tell you yet, Moses. Why are there nail prints in the backs of your feet? Can't tell you yet, Moses. Why is there a spear place in your side? I see this glory around you, but I see where you've been wounded. I can't tell you yet because Isaiah's got to write it down. I can't tell you yet. The place by God was a picture of where Christ is. The place by God was a picture of what would happen on Calvary. But now can you imagine what must have happened when Moses was 120 years old? Once again, God carries Moses up on the top of a mountain. And he watches Joshua lead the people across the Jordan River. Oh, let me say it like the old country folks used to say, Jordan River. <laughs> Watching them march into the promised land. Now, Moses, this is why you couldn't see my face. You see how you messed up that one time? That cost you something. You couldn't go in, but I'm going to let you see it. Now, Moses, it's time to come home. Now you can see my face. Moses, I'm going to lay you down here in your burial spot. And I'm going to look in your face and bring you home. Can you imagine the last thing that Moses saw was his Savior, my Savior, your Savior, in the face of God, because when we get to heaven and we want to see God, the face that we will see is the face of Christ. And the Bible tells us it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, oh, we shall be like him. We can't see his face yet either. 
But every now and then, just like this morning, while we were in worship, I felt his hand on my face. I felt his presence go by me. I felt his, I felt his robe brush by me. Every now and then I catch a scent of his sweet savor. Every now and then my, I feel him wipe away a tear. Every now and then I feel him give me a hug and an embrace when I'm, when I'm worn down and weary. And every now and then when I cry, I feel him rock me and tell me everything's going to be all right. Every now and then after he walks by, I feel like I want to put a veil up on my face because even I don't want to look in the mirror because I feel his Shekinah glory is so bright that I just can't stand it. Deacon Barbara last, was talking about last night and Sister Sylvia was amen in last night. I went home last night and I, I couldn't hardly sleep. I was awake until almost two o'clock in the morning, just reminiscing on how the spirit moved yesterday evening and yesterday morning. And I just, I couldn't get to sleep. And when I did get to sleep, I woke up rushing. Just because of the presence of God. That's one of them hand over your face moments. And every now and then, we ought to have a stand on the rock moment with God. And the other thing was, the place by him, the God said, there's a place right by me. I want to tell you something else I saw. And somebody else could see it face to face because they were about ready to go home. Y'all remember a man named Deacon Stephen? He was in the midst of going through persecution. They were stoning him. He was being stoned to death for preaching Christ Jesus and wouldn't back down. And all of a sudden, he probably heard Jesus say, look up, Stephen. And there Jesus was not sitting at the right hand of God, the place by God but standing and he looked up and he said, I see the Lord standing at the right hand of God. That's where Moses was standing. Moses got to stand in the place where the Lord stood watching Stephen be persecuted. And Moses stood there and looked in the face of Jesus. Stephen stood there and looked up and I can see Jesus say, Stephen, don't worry about the rocks. Look at me because you coming home right now. Moses got to stand in that very place where Jesus would once sit and only stand up to acknowledge Stephen. Oh, y'all got to forgive me. I'm getting a glimpse of it right now. He got to stand in the place where Jesus would sit and then stand up to acknowledge Stephen's martyrdom. Oh, can you imagine the power he must have felt? My God, y'all quiet this morning. As I extend the invitation, maybe somebody wants to stand on the rock. But because you can. He wants us all to have that opportunity. God's saying, there's a place by me. It's now covered with blood. And if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, come stand on the rock. Let him not just cover your face, take your face in your hand and say, 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Here, tra let's transfer burdens. I'll take yours, and you take mine, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come on, let's transfer this. Because I paid for yours. Mine is free. Give it over. Is there one, won't you stand?